friends? Yeah! Are you loving fifth grade? I hope so. You know, we're cruising along here. We're already on chapter two. That's right. Look at this. We have lesson 2.1. Yes, I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have our topic today, which is place the first digit. Okay, I like it. Something to do with division, maybe? I hope so. It says a central question. This is our learning target. This is our focus. It says, how can you tell where to place the first digit of a quotient without dividing? Woo-wee! Whoa! Is that like, did that go over your head? Whoa, watch out, Frisbee! Yes, I'm telling you, my goodness. Whoa, we're going to have to really focus on this lesson today. I hope so. This seems like it's going to be really important. But of course, we can't do any of that unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yes, look at here. It says Tanya has eight purple daisies. In all, she counts 128 petals on her flowers. If each flower has the same number of petals, how many petals are on one flower? Woo-wee! Okay, this sounds like you're straight out of division problem. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our little blue shaded box. Our little helper box. It says, underline the sentence that tells you what you are trying to find. And it does say, circle the numbers you need to use. How will you use these numbers to solve the problem? Okay, so let's go ahead and do these one at a time. First, we're going to underline the sentence that tells you what you are trying to find. Very simple here. I'm not using my wonderful smart software anymore. So I'm trying something new here with Notepad. Let's see if we can get this to work. So right here it says, how many, right there, how many petals are on one flower? That is what we're trying to find. Cool. Well, let's see. Back to our blue shaded square. Circle the numbers you need to use. Okay, let's go ahead and circle the numbers we need to use. Definitely going to need the eight purple daisies. There you go. And we're also going to need the count. We have a total count here of 128 petals on her flowers. So we're going to need to circle that as well. And I kind of like to, I could just circle just the number. I'm kind of circling the whole thing because a number all by itself doesn't really tell me much. But if I read it and say eight purple daisies, 128 petals on her flowers, it gives me a little bit more information. That's all. How will you use these numbers to solve the problem? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that total amount. And I'm just going to divide that by the number of purple daisies and to determine what my quotient would be, which is how many petals there are on each flower. Cool. And then, of course, if we look at our unlocking the problem, we have 128 divided by 8. Step 1 says, use an estimate to place the first digit in the, in the quotient. So let's be clear here. Asking us to divide this number, we need to know what that first digit is going to be in the quotient. The estimate may have the number 160. Now, 160, 128, those are not the same numbers. In fact, the estimate seems much higher, does it not? And there's a reason why I think that they may have chosen the 160. Because if you look at that divisor, divisor 8, wouldn't it be nice if we could make 8 compatible with a number that when you divide it will result in no remainder, right? Because just look at 16 then divided by 8, that's a nice easy basic fact that'll give us 2. And that'll make that really, really easy. 160 then, right, divided by 8. See, that makes it a little easier for us to deal with. So we're going to put our 8 here, but rather than getting our 2, we're just going to end up with 20, right? Because 160 is 10 times greater than 16. And it basically says here, first digit of the quotient will be in the, if you look at it, it's going to be in the tens place. The reason why we know that is look at our answer is 20. That's our quotient. So let's go ahead and look at step 2. Divide the tens. It does say here divide, and this is 12 tens divided by 8. So let's look at that number carefully. So when we look at that number, 128, we could rename this number in a lot of different ways. We could say that that's 128 ones. We don't say it that way, but we could say it that way. We could also say we actually have 12 point 8 tens. Because if you look at that, we have a 100 here. 100 is really 10 tens, is it not? And in the next one, we have two tens. If you have that 100, your 10 tens and your two tens, yeah, then you're going to end up with 12 tens. It's just another way of renaming the same number. Here when it says divide, 12 tens divided by 8. The reason we couldn't divide by the 1 is that that 100 is just one group 
of 100. So it's just 100. 100 is equal to 100. And you can't take that 100 and share it equally with eight groups. In this case, eight flowers. You wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, one flower would get 100, but then the other seven wouldn't get anything. So that's why we need to rename that 100 as 10 tens. Now we have 12 tens, and now we can share those equally. This is the concept. This isn't just the algorithm. This is us understanding division and what it means. This is important for the common core. I know, you're like, Mr. War, the common core. Those are the two scariest words, you know? And you know that sometimes it may seem scary. You know what I like about it is that it does explain things, why things are what they are. So since we can not share those, we can share one group of 110, each one of those flowers that means we're going to be ending up with eight because eight times one is 10. We subtract and we'd have to regroup here. And of course, that's going to be zero there. Now we end up with 12 up there and us a remainder of four. Now we go ahead and we bring down the eight ones that we have here. The eight ones, it's right up above. And now that's going to give us 48. I'll say subtract. Oops, I'm sorry. I went ahead. Subtracted 12 tens, uh, blank tens. 12 tens. I know that seems kind of weird. Well, almost seems like it should say 12 tens minus. Maybe it's missing the minus sign. 12 tens minus 8 tens, right? Because down here it says check. Then it says that 4 tens, because that's what we actually had left over here, cannot be shared among 8 groups without regrouping. Aha. So we'd have to regroup again because 4 tens couldn't be shared. Gotcha. Because if we come down, step 3 says regroup any tens left as ones, then divide the ones. Okay, we had four tens left over. So now we're going to have to kind of go back in reverse here. So I see how I went ahead now. Oops. Mr. Moore, you did it again. I know. I just start doing the math. And uh, of course, this is a video. So I'm trying to keep the flow going here. You didn't see that part. Okay. Now I have my 48 tens since four couldn't be shared. But we can take the 48 ones now. They're not 48 tens. I'm sorry if I said that. 48 ones divided by eight. And in that case, you can take eight times six. And that will give you 48, leaving us with zero. And then there you can see the six, they already put that up for us. Subtract 48 ones minus 48 ones. See, there's that minus sign they forgot up above. You have zero ones that cannot be shared among eight groups. 16, close to the estimate of, and this is what our, our quotient was up here. 16, close to the estimate of, and what was our estimate again? Yeah, it was 20. Remember up above? It was 20. Answer is reasonable. So there are 16 petals on one flower. All right. But I don't know. That seems pretty clear. That talk just says explain how estimating the quotient helps you at both the beginning and the end of a division problem. Well, I will just talk this out. I won't write this out, but I can I can actually think of a couple. So that both the beginning and the end. The beginning was helpful because it gave us an idea right away where that first digit was going to be placed in the quotient. And that's the, the topic of this math lesson. It allowed us to see that the very first digit can be placed in the tens column. So that's helpful. Of course, at the end, it's a great way to check to see if our answer is reasonable, which they list right here. Okay. Oh, let's keep on moving on down. Now we have example. It says divide. Use place value to place the first digit. That's the whole purpose of this lesson. 4,236 divided by 5. And over here it says remember to estimate the quotient first. And that's what we're going to do. Estimate. Over here we have the simple fact because we have 40, right, divided by 5 which we know is 8, right? Because we know our basic facts. But we have also two more powers of 10 there. So we just add those on the end. That would mean then, right, 5 times 8 is 40 plus or two zeros gives us 4,000. So our estimate here is going to be 800. And then it also lets us know, and the whole purpose of this lesson is we know that the very first digit in the quotient is going to be in the hundreds place. Okay, let's go ahead and look at step one. Step one says use place value to place the first digit. This says look at the thousands. In the thousands place, we have a four. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, what that means is, is we have four thousand. We could share one thousand equally to four groups, but we have five. That's a problem. We can't share that. That's why when we say well, a five, and you guys know from the um, long division algorithm they say can five go into four and you say no that's what we're saying we're saying that we can't break apart four thousand in such a way so that each group is going to get a thousand we're going to be short that's why we move over into a hundreds place 
we go in there, what does it say here? It says four thousands cannot be shared among five groups without regrouping. Look at the hundreds. Okay, I just said that. So now what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the four two, but 42. What we're really looking at now, when you think about it, is we're actually looking at 4,200. Because, right? Because in 4,000, if we write this down here on the side, 4,000 is going to be equal to how many hundreds? Isn't that going to be equal to 40 hundreds? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to spell this whole thing out without it getting in my way here. 40 hundreds. You got 40 of those. That's what makes up 4,000. Plus, you also have two hundreds. And I'll just put plus two hundreds. It gives us then 4,200. And we write that like that. 4,200 is the same as 4,200. Okay? hope that makes some sense. Okay. That's what we're going to be doing. It says that blank hundreds can be shared among five groups. So that would be 42 hundreds can be shared among five groups. It can. First digit is in the, when you notice that the two is up here, yeah, the first is in the hundreds place. So that's the purpose of this lesson. That kind of helps us. So then when we actually do the division, we should be looking at that. Okay, now step two says divide the hundreds. So let's go ahead and divide those. We're going to take 42 hundreds then, and we're going to divide those 42 hundreds by the five, because that's our divisor. Here, they've already done part of that for us because they said, well, we could give each group eight hundreds. It's above the hundred, so each group is going to get 800. So eight times five is going to be 40 hundreds. So obviously, that means we're going to have two hundreds left over. And so we multiply, subtract. Well, we're going to subtract 42 hundreds minus 40 hundreds. It's a challenge sometimes figuring out what they want in the little blanks because I'm used to just doing the math. When we have little blanks like that, sometimes I slow down. Caution, Mr. War, red flag. Yes, you know. So let's see, check. So blank hundreds, so two hundreds cannot be shared among five groups without regrouping. Cool. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Step three, divide the tens. Let's take a look at the problem now. Okay, we had the eight hundreds from the last step we subtract the 40 hundreds we ended up with two hundreds which we couldn't regroup so we brought down the three tens as indicated by that right red arrow and now we have 23 tens we say there's 23 tens because two hundreds is the same as 20 tens then we have three tens that we added on 23 tens can be shared this is what we need to write down here we're going to be dividing then the 23 tens we're going to divide that by our divisor again by five this is kind of letting us know what's happening with the problem. Because if we just look at the numbers, it's just 23. We, we don't understand always what we're doing. But when you understand how we're regrouping, it makes division make a little bit more sense. Okay? So we're going to multiply. Well, they've already put the 4 up there for us. So we're going to actually take the 5, multiply that by the 4, and remember 10s. 5 times 4, 10s. And I don't know if they want us to put equals, but that equals 20 10s. I'm going to write that down there because I think that helps me understand it even more. The 20 tens is listed there as well. Now we subtract. So we're going to subtract our 23 tens that we had. You can see they've already put the 4 up above uh, the dividend up there, up in the quotient. They already put the 4 above the tens place. So now I have 23 tens. Oh, not divided by. Subtract. And that's going to be 20. I don't know if we need to put our 3 tens, but I will. And then it just says check. Well, check, yes. So we'll say three tens. I guess that's why they gave us two lines. That cannot be divided. Therefore, we'll need to regroup the three tens. I don't know, pretty, <laughs> mine's so long. I don't think it was that long when we were doing it on the previous page. But again, this is from my understanding. Three tens cannot be divided any further. And therefore, we're going to need to regroup those three tens. Okay, now we come to step four. Wow, we're almost there at the end. This is divide the ones. Okay, so we had three tens. Now you can see by the pictures indicated that we're going to bring that six down. Now we have 36 ones. So we're going to take the 36 ones then, and I'm calling it just as that, 36 ones, and we're going to divide that by our five again, which is our divisor. Okay, and in this case, you can see that 5 will go, okay, and there's 7 times. 7 times 5 is 35. That's why I put the 7 above the 6 in the 1's place. So we're going to actually take 5 then. We're going to multiply that by 7 1's, which is going to give us 35 1's. 
Now you come with the subtracting. This is really easy, huh? 36 ones and subtract the 35 ones that we had right up above. Of course, that's going to equal simple one, one. Like how I connected that to that little dot that was there. I don't know where he came from, but he was suddenly there. Then it does say check. Okay, so in this case now, we can't divide the one any further. The one, one cannot be shared. That's the same thing, be shared equally. Maybe that's how they put it on the previous page. Equally, sometimes I use the word so. I don't always like using the word so, but I always end up using so. I'll put equally, therefore, there will be a remainder of one. That's right, because now we have our 847, which is the quotient up above, and we have a remainder of one. I always look at mathematical practice, it says it right over here. Explain how you know if your answer is reasonable. Here we check. Well, first thing is, just like last time, we knew that the first digit was going to show up in the hundreds place, because that's what we stated above. And it did. It showed up in the hundred because 800. The other thing was, is that we did a estimate. But if you recall, our estimate was 800. Therefore, our answer, 847, is extremely close to that answer. There we go. Hey, hey. Woo-hoo. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mr. Warren, having so much fun. I love this job. Yes, I do. And I'm so glad that you come here, too. I know. I hear that music jamming out in the background. Let's just know the video's at an end. It is. Now, my friends, thank you so much for coming aboard. Like I always say, Live long to prosper.